So you're ready to paint your first door hanger and I'm sure you're wondering where do I even begin? Do I go out and buy paints right away? Do I get brushes? If so, what kind? There's so many different kinds of brushes on the market, so many different kinds of paint. Now, when I began over 10 years ago, I started by using just some paints that my mother had given me. It was in her craft stash. Some of them were okay, but some of them had seen better days and were starting to really dry out. It wasn't long before I had to head to the store and find some new paints. I stopped at Walmart and got some of their apple barrel paints, which are made by a company called Folk Art. And they're really affordable. They got the job done, but I did experience some troubles. Um, some of the paints were pretty watery. Some of them didn't have color consistency. You know, if I bought another bottle, it might not exactly match the previous bottle. And then some colors just didn't cover the wood grain very good. So I kept having problems. It wasn't until I switched to Deco Art Americana craft paints that I really started to feel like I was at ease when painting. You're always gonna have consistency with the color from bottle to bottle with these. You're always gonna have a really good thickness that you need when painting, not too thick, not too thin. And they're just a really good quality craft paint that's not gonna break the bank. You get a really great bang for your buck with these. Now this is an eight ounce bottle. Most of the time when you find these in stores, you'll find them in two ounce bottles. Uh, some of your primary colors, they will come in these sizes. I probably wouldn't go out and buy the large sizes unless you're going to be doing paint parties or you know you love that color and you're just going to use it over and over again. Start out with this size because there are so many different colors to choose from that you're going to want to try a lot of them. Don't feel like you have to go out and buy them all. Start with maybe uh, just a, a simple rainbow of colors and then build from there if you're missing a color. But don't feel like you have to buy every single color they offer. There is a difference in this kind of paint versus say like house paint, which is made of latex. This kind of paint is made of acrylic. House paint of course is sold in larger quantities, larger bundles. You can use that on door hangers, but I feel like you're gonna have a harder time building up a stash of colors because you're gonna have to buy it in large quantities instead of these nice neat little bottles. And while we're on the topic of paint, paint pens are also important to have if you're a beginner. I've got two different brands here. Posca is one brand, not pasta like spaghetti. Posca, Uniposca. These are really great to start with. You can find them um, at Michael's and Hobby Lobby, lots of craft stores, even Amazon. You don't have to get all the colors. White and black is really what you're gonna need to start with. Another brand that I love is Artistro. Now this is a medium point. They have medium, they have extra fine, they have fine tip. You don't have to buy all the sizes, all the colors. I would say get a fine tip and a medium tip of either brand. You don't have to have both brands. Pick a brand wherever you find them. Get a medium and a fine tip for each color, black and white, and that's a really good starter. The reason you're gonna wanna have these on hand is because when you're doing lettering, it can be really difficult if you're a beginner to do lettering with a brush. So these paint pens are really gonna save you. Also adding fine details or outlining things, if you wanna outline them with black and just kind of like clean up some of your paint lines, it's kind of like putting your coloring book lines on after you've colored. If you wanna do that, then having a paint pen handy is really helpful. The next thing you're gonna need is brushes. There are so many different kinds of brushes that you could buy. Do not go out and buy the most expensive brushes. You're gonna be talking about different types of bristles, different types of handles, different sizes. There's so many different variables. Keep it simple go to the craft aisle, the craft painting aisle. Find some that have nylon bristles. They might not be yellow. They could be white or another color. Most often they're yellow or white, but see how quickly those spring back to life. These are perfect for craft painting. I actually sell a set just like this in my shop and they have these beautiful pink handles. So let's talk about handles. These are made of wood and they are coated with a really nice uh, paint and sealer. So these are gonna last a long time as long as you take care of them. If you wanna spend a little bit more, you can get some that have plastic or acrylic handles that might last you a little longer because if you ever forget and leave your paint brushes in water overnight, it can cause water to seep up inside this ferrule and start to cause the wood of the handles to swell. You don't want that to happen. So don't start out with the most expensive brushes. Go get you some craft brushes with nice springy little bristles in a variety of sizes. So you're gonna need a large one, this one's about one inches wide. You're gonna need some that are around mid-size. This one's a, a half inch wide. And you're gonna need different shapes. 
So this is a filbert tip shape. It is different from this one right here, which is a flat tip shape. So make sure that whatever you're buying has a variety. You don't have to buy several packs. A lot of times you can find one pack that has this variety in it. And they should also include round tip brushes like this for doing fine detail work. Now let's talk about what you're gonna be painting on. If you're painting door hangers, like I am, you're gonna be painting on wooden blanks. So these um, can be something you purchase at Hobby Lobby. In the past few years, Hobby Lobby has really stepped up their door hanger blank game. You can find lots of different shapes in there for the different seasons in their spring shop section. They usually have um, something that's patriotic, something with flowers. So you could start with that sort of thing. But all year round, you can also find just wooden rounds in their shop that um, you could trace any design on, which works great with the templates that we provide you. So on our website, we have a section called the free template library. It has three door hanger templates in there that are free to you every quarter we change those out. So right now, this stars and stripes forever design is in there, but it will be changing out soon to some fall designs. So you can trace that shape on a wooden round or on a canvas or any shape that you could find to sit down and paint. You might not be comfortable cutting out your own pieces yet, so you're gonna need to buy something to paint on or find something that's sitting around the house. Or you can order our shapes from our website at shopdoorhangers.com. We'll ship them to you. They have the designs lasered on the surface and you can follow right along with my painting tutorials. So let's talk about which designs you should pick out because if you're a beginner, there are some that are gonna be a little bit more complex than others. You need to pick something that is fairly simple without a lot of colors or a lot of details. So I would recommend trying to keep it under six different colors. So let's take this one, for example, that's hanging up behind me. This design only has four colors, red, blue, this uh, antique white color and black. That's all, four colors. So you know that painting this is not gonna be super complicated. You're also gonna wanna choose something that doesn't have a ton of detail. This one here behind me, the original template of this design is very basic and would be great for a beginner. Now I'm a little bit more advanced and I've been painting for years. So I actually took it and I upped it a little bit by making those flower petals look even more realistic. But you could paint these flowers in a very basic fashion and skip all that detail work and it still turn out super cute. One of the first door hanger designs that I started with was a mason jar. And I don't mean a mason jar like this. I mean just the shape of a mason jar. And I think it said, hey y'all or welcome y'all or something like that on it. So it was maybe three colors tops. It was like that teal, black, and white. Another design that was really popular when I first started out that I taught a lot at paint parties was a sunflower. If you think about it, that's only maybe three to four different colors. It was really simple to paint. It felt achievable for people. So that's another one that's really great for beginners. Also a baseball. Baseballs are just a big circle that are painted like white or antique white. And all they have are the stripes or the, the stitches going down the outside. And so those are only two to three colors as well. So I know I said six colors, but it sounds like as I'm saying this, three to four colors might even be better if you're really a beginner. So before you run off and get started, let me share three pieces of advice for you. Number one, take your time and give yourself grace and enjoy the process. That really sounds like three in one, doesn't it? What I'm trying to say is don't stress out over this. Don't feel anxiety over painting. Painting is supposed to lower your blood pressure. It's supposed to help you relax. I want this to be an enjoyable process for you. So if at any point you begin to feel frustrated, this is point number two, get up and walk away, come back a little while, go eat a snack, that always works for me, or come back the next day, maybe, you, maybe you're tired. If it's 2 a.m. and you're still painting, you could be getting really frustrated because you're like, that polka dot is just not turning out right. It just looks like an egg instead of a dot. You know, you just start to get frustrated over the tiniest little thing. Maybe you just need to go to bed, come back the next day. Or maybe you're having a bad day and you're taking it out on, the, on your project and you're just really getting frustrated. Walk away, come back later. A lot of times we are way more forgiving of ourselves and our artwork when we've had some time to process and come back and look at it with fresh eyes. Third tip is to start on the largest areas first. So with this door hanger in mind, I would start with the white part of that star. That's the biggest area that's in the background. From there, I'm gonna pick the next biggest area, which would be this star. And then from there, I'm gonna pick the red star. And so I'm just gonna build on that. Think working from the back to the front, which we're gonna be talking about in a future video. Working from the back to the front of the project. What is in the furthest in the back? 
and then what is in the front. I would not start with the words, that is in the front, right? I would not start with those little black accent lines around the outside, that's in the front. Those things come at the very end of your project. And that goes for anything that you're gonna put black paint on. If your project has black paint on it at all, that probably needs to be one of the last things that you paint because black can't be painted over very easily and it's very hard to paint around black paint without messing it up. So save those black letters, black details for the end. Now that I've given you enough tips to get started, I hope that you enjoy this process. Go and gather your supplies, pick out your project and start painting and report back. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe because I'm gonna have lots of great videos with lots of great tips coming up next. Like I said, my next video is gonna be talking about that painting back to front thing. Um, there's also lots of videos on here about how to care for your paint brushes and all kinds of things like that. So be sure and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Bye y'all.